Hey everybody and welcome back. This is Josh SDH and we're back doing some more world edit tutorials. And today we're going to work with selections and then, um, well yeah, pretty much working with selections. <laughs> so we're going to do some more advanced selecting. If you remember back in episode 3, we showed you how to make selections using your wand. Or in this case, our handy dandy wooden axe. Uh, you'd select things by left clicking on one point, right clicking on the other, and then that would be your selection. Well, there's a lot of things you can do of selections, and so it's not just f replacing and setting blocks. You can also copy them, move them, uh, and change your, even your selection around. You can shift your selection all over the place if you need to. So let's start with that. Let's start with editing the selection itself. Not the blocks that you're selecting, but the actual selection. So in this case, uh, the wireframe that you can see. So sometimes you, you work out, maybe you're replacing a mountain or something, and you, you get everything done, except you realize, oh, I forgot to select, I'm setting up the scenario here, uh, there we go, I forgot to select the whole top row. And maybe it's a big mountain, and you don't want to fly around to reselect the bottom point or the top point, you don't want to do the, the, the position setting or the H position setting. So what are you to do? Well, what you can actually do is you can just expand uh, your selection up. Uh, or down or left or right, in this case north, south, east or west, quite easily. All you have to do is use the expand command. So that's slash slash expand the amount, in this case one, and the direction you want to go. If you don't put a direction, it's going to go the direction you're looking, the direction you're facing. If you do use a direction, you just need to use the first letter of the direction you want to go. U for up, D for down, east, west, north, south would be E, W, N, S, respectively. In this case we want to go up. So you see, I didn't have to change any of the points. The expansion or the, the selection just expanded itself. The opposite of expand is contract, and so it's the same format. So if I wanted to get rid of and only select that first row of uh, this box, I could just do contract two and down D, and there you go. So we're down to just the bottom row. Uh, in this case, though, for our examples, I'm going to want all three. So let's uh, do that. There we go. So now we have all three again. So sometimes, though, what you really have to do is uh, go out a full set of blocks or in a full set of blocks. Instead of expanding in one dimension, you want to expand in all three or you want to contract in all three. For that command, it's called inset and outset. So say, for example, we have this selected. And what we really want is just the very middle block. So it would be the red block in the middle here. How do we do that? Well, in that case, it's pretty easy. We're just going to do what's called inset. So you do slash slash inset and the amount, and it's going to move that much in in each direction. In this case, we want to inset 2, and if that worked, oh, actually we want to inset 1. Insetting 2 actually just inverted the selection, which in this case is actually the same because it's symmetrical. Don't worry about it. Geometry's fun. So we want to actually inset 1. There we go, and you can see now we have that inner block set. If we want to expand out and say we want to do this whole cube that we've built plus one in every direction, well, we'll just outset three or two. We'll just outset two. Geometry's fun, but I can't do math tonight. There we go. So you see we've now outset around the whole box as well as one space in every direction, including below it. So you want to expand and contract to move in individual dimensions, which you get to kind of decide. Or you can inset or outset to kind of blow it up or shrink it down, uh, again, based on the amount that you decide. Okay, so that's great. So now you have everything selected. But maybe what you really meant to select was the box, the size of the box is correct, but you need to select it one up. Well, you can shift your selection around. So if you type in slash slash shift the amount in a direction, it'll move your selection in that direction. So you'll see that our selection stayed the same size, but has now moved up one block. So that's important too. And again, you can shift it up, down, east, west, north, and south. And if you don't remember your directions, uh, don't forget the cobblestone trick. And if you don't know what that is, let me know and I'll put it in the next tutorial. Uh, or just have a compass um, or look at the clouds. There's lots of easy ways to tell what's going on and what direction you're looking in Minecraft. All right, great. So now you know how to move the selection around. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, um, you can change it around. Great. Uh, there are some other things you can do. So if you want to get some metrics, uh, some measures of what's going on, you can do things like slash slash size, and it will tell you the size of your selection. 
That might be important. You'll see in this case that the size is a five by five by five cube. It has 125 blocks in it. Uh, it might be important, you know, if you want, if you're on a multiplayer server and you don't want to crash the server, so you want to make sure your selection is not astronomical. This is another way to check it, particularly if you don't have the plugin that lets you see the wireframe. That size command could be helpful before you start executing some crazy stuff. You can also do slash slash count to get the number of blocks in your selection. I think it will ignore error. Oops. No, it won't. You have to actually put the type of block you want. So in this case, we want to count uh, the wool spots. Sometimes it's hard to remember all these. And so we counted 27 wool blocks. Let's see, does that seem right? 9, 18, 27. Yeah, perfect. So it's 27 wool blocks. Uh, the other thing you can do is distribution. And so, um, and that's just, I think, D-I-S-T-R. There you go. So that'll tell you that there's 27 wool blocks and this selection has 98 air blocks. Is it the most useful? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it could be useful if you want to, you know, generate a fresh world, run around, select a mountain and get the distribution of minerals. And then if you want to build your own for whatever reason by hand, but still have it realistic in terms of the amount of stuff you have in it, that'd be a good way to kind of get those measures. So that's really working with the selections. The only other thing we didn't talk about is you can actually do um, expand vert. And what that's going to do is collect, uh, select your whole uh, skybox. It's going to go from bedrock to ceiling on, the, on that selection. And so if you do that, it's just going to be slash slash expand vert. And you'll see now it's selected my selection, but it goes all the way from skybox the the maximum height i mean you can fly higher but you can't build any higher down to bedrock and so if i set this now to air and if i could spell set before i did that you can see i could fly all the way down to bedrock now you want to be careful because technically i could crash my world because i'm now below bedrock and this is not a good place to be uh, normally. So just be careful that you don't go too far down. Oh, but you know, it's a quick, nice, easy way to make some, maybe put a floor back in. But it's a quick, nice, easy way to make some sinkholes down into to no man's land um, or such. So you can do that if needed. I'm actually going to undo that because uh, no one really needs a sinkhole to the end of the world. And if I accidentally turn flying off, that could be bad, bad news. Okay. So now we've done that. Uh, we'll select a block over here to get the selection out of the way. Perfect. There's some other things you can do that's really fun with the actual selection. First, let's do the move command. Maybe we love, absolutely love for whatever reason, this this block we've built. And pretend you know it's something awesome. But maybe build a statue or something. And looking around, you're like, oh, the statue would be even better if we moved it, I don't know, three blocks up. Well, you can do that. Whatever you select now, we have the selection. We can use the move command to move whatever's in it elsewhere. Um, the other cool thing about that is we can use that move command to leave blocks behind uh, to fill the, the gaps we're leaving. And we'll show you two examples. First, let's move it up. So much like all of our other commands we've gone over today, move, the amount, and the direction. And you'll see, boom, it took those blocks and it moved them up. Awesome. So now my, my awesome block of greatness, official name, patent pending, is floating in the sky and we're happy. But maybe I really want to move it three blocks north and in its place I want to leave ice. So you can do that too. So you'll type in the move again. Oops, not move. Move. The amount. The direction. And we're going to go north. And then ice. And this should leave, move it three blocks north and it should leave ice behind. And it did. So that's north. And it left ice in its place. Now you might be doing this, you know, if you're doing it in the sky, you're probably just going to leave it alone because it's just going to leave air by default. But if you're moving something underwater and you don't want to cause some weird currents, you'll leave water behind. If you're moving something in the sand, you might want to leave sand behind. So you can see it, ca it can be convenient to have that. Okay, so now we can move things. Well, that's all fun and exciting. But what really is the, the my favorite part of this is actually called the stack command. And so... I'm going to show you two, um, two uses of the stack command. First, I'm going to get rid of this weather here. Two uses of stack command that I really enjoy. The first is bridge building. And I'm going to show you my bridge over here that I was playing around with. So say you design a bridge that you're really proud of. In this case, I have my sandstone bridge. 
I use buttons to make it decorative looking. They don't really do anything. Uh, some lights and nice wood path. And really, all I designed when I made this was, let me see if I can select it for you, was this block. Okay? But then what I did is using the stack command, I repeated my selection 50 times going this way. So I didn't have to rebuild all this. And again, you can see when it stacks it, it literally is just cutting right through the land, cutting, uh, floating in the sky if it needs to. So you're still going to need to do some repairs. But it was able to make this bridge in one command versus having to build this manually. And that's awesome. Uh, if you've watched my nether track world, which I haven't really done a video of that in a little bit here, that's how I did those uh, tunnels once I figured out how to use world edit. So let me show you how to do that. So maybe we're going to make something that we really like. Uh, let's make... Let's make a smiley face. And uh, we'll do blue eyes and a red mouth. And so we will do, uh, and again, if I was really doing this well, I would make a cylinder instead of drawing this out pixel art style. That's okay. And we'll just make this the face here. And sure, we'll give it two eyes. Bada bing, bada bing. And we'll give it a awkward looking little mouth down here. Yay, a smiley face. Now you can see why I don't do pixel art. So say we come down here and we select this, and we'll select we'll select underneath it, because now that you know how to do the shift command, it's really easy just to shift it up. There we go. So now we've selected just the smiley face and the air around it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to face the direction we want to stack it, and we're going to type slash slash or slash slash stack and the amount of times that we want to um, repeat it, basically. So stacking is repeating in this case. And so we want to go four. And you'll see what happened was it just gave me four more of these instantly. I didn't have to figure that out. I didn't have to copy really and paste anything. I just selected and hit stack. And it went the direction I was looking. Now, just like with expand and, and contract, you can give it a direction a directional a cardinal direction that you want to stack it so instead of just looking that direction I could have done instead stack up and maybe I want to go four up oops gotta hit the double slash on the stacks there we go all right, so now you can see it repeated its way up four times. Now, for those of you who are kind of thinking ahead of the game of why that might be a useful to, to stack up, I'm going to give you a little hint. What if you wanted to design a maze? And there's some other ways to do mazes with World Edit, which we'll do in another lesson. But what if you wanted to design a maze, but make it really quick and easy to kind of see what you're doing? And so we'll get to give you an example. Let's find a nice big flattish area. Of course, we could just make a flattish area, but we'll use this one here. Okay, so maybe and we're going to make the world's simplest maze. And so you'll start at this door here. And you'll have to get your way out this door over here. And so again, this is just an example. It's not going to be, you know, anything complicated. Um, but it's a proof of concept, and so you should be able to figure this out. And so you build your maze, and then maybe you do something like this. And obviously, that should be a pretty quick maze to solve. But so you built this mage. And, and the reason you're doing it this way is maybe you're doing something decorative down here, and you don't necessarily want to build all the walls. But once you've laid out your floor plan, and you know, if a maze isn't something you're thinking of, maybe it's a castle. You just you outline the floor plan of your castle. Uh, what you're going to do is then select the blocks and make up your floor plan, and stack it up maybe three times. And what you'll see is now we've, by using the floor plan kind of as our 2D model of what the walls should look like, uh, you're going to be able to then build it into a 3D model really quickly and easily. And so now our 2D little maze is an actual maze. And you can get lost and, hey, I solved it, go us. So the stack command really, really is fantastic in terms of uh, being able to, to do a lot of fun stuff. Again, if you design a, a beautiful bridge segment and you want to just repeat it over the course of whatever direction you're going, you can do that as well. 
So there's one more thing I want to show you, and I, I alluded to it when we talked about brushes, and that's the copy command. Uh, copy is a little wonky. Uh, to give you an example, we're going to do a little thing here with these colored blocks because it's easier to see what's going on. Alright, so I'm making a checkerboard pattern here on purpose. Okay. So when you use the copy command, copy works uh, based off of the relative position you are when you copy it. So what that means is, if I type in slash copy right here when I'm facing it, when I actually hit paste, it's going to paste it right up next to my face, wherever I'm standing. But if I'm one, two, three blocks away when I copy it, whenever I hit paste, it's going to paste it three away from me. This sounds confusing, but really what it means is, when you're using copy and paste, you want to make sure that wherever you copy something from and where you paste it to, you're in the same relative position. Let me give you an example. So I'm going to type in slash slash copy. And it says blocks copied. Now I'm going to walk over, I'm not even going to walk, I'm just going to stand right here, look off in the distance, I'm going to type in slash slash paste. And you look around and you're like, well, where did it go? Well, the thing is, is, as I said, it was relative. Since I didn't actually move my feet, it pasted it relative to where I was when I copied it. Because the trick of it is, it doesn't matter which way you're looking. So you've got to keep that in mind, too, because copy and paste actually matters the cardinal direction everything is facing. But now if I walked over here and typed in slash slash paste, you'll see it appear pretty much right in front of me, about three blocks away. See what I mean? So copying and pasting can be tricky. But what can make it a little easier is once you've copied something, you can actually make a brush and use that brush as the clipboard. And so to do that, just like before, you type in brush. And then afterwards, you just type in clipboard. And now you have a clipboard brush. And so wherever I paste, it's going to make these appear. And so like before, when we're pasting, um, it'll sync the pasting sometimes so this time it's, it's actually syncing it down but you can see that here that it is working so you want to keep that in mind copy and paste can be useful um, it can also be a bit of a pain in the rear depending on which block you selected first uh, the way to fix this issue is actually to select the bottom block first then the second block I think um, but again you have to experiment and right now my right clicking is being a pain there we go um, that should fix the issue. Let's see now if I... Nope, still not getting 3D. So sometimes it can be used as a pain. Um, you can use the copy and paste though to turn on a mask. So if I wanted to, I could turn on a sandstone mask. And then I, when I'm using my brush, it was only going to affect the sandstone. It won't affect the actual sand below. And so you see now that it's, uh, it shouldn't be affecting the sand. Is this all, oh, this is all sandstone below. So it's not the best example, because when I cleared this out, I turned it into sandstone. Here's sand, so you'll see it ignores the sand. Um, so yeah, so you can use your masking with the clipboard brush. So that's a way you can actually paint some patterns. And if you're doing like a big castle and you want to have like a woven rug, you can do things like that and kind of work your way through it. Um, but remember that it's Sometimes it can get a little wonky. The pattern doesn't always repeat or tessellate as nicely as you would hope it would if you're not careful where you're clicking. There you go. So as long as you're taking your time, it should work. So there you go. So we've talked about expanding, contracting, inset, outset, shift, all the fun little metrics, the size, the count, the distribution, as well as copying, pasting, uh, the copy brush, and stacking. So stacking has a lot of really cool applications, so I encourage you to really play around with that one because you can do some fun stuff. Uh, the next time we have an episode, I think what we'll do is go over some of the, the random things, uh, generating forests, uh, filling lava, filling water, and um, having some fun with that. So in the meantime, have a great one. Enjoy World Edit. Love Minecraft, and we'll catch you all later.